and you're listening to Revolution Rampage or watching it on YouTube with us here today. We have a very special guest with us. We have Abby Labar, in house uh, host for the Carolina Hurricanes and current anchor on Fox Sports Carolinas. Um, so we're gonna have a nice fun chat with her today in this very special episode of Revolution Rampage. Hi, Abby. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I appreciate it. We're all excited that hockey is happening, and we're officially in the first round of the playoffs. So <laughs> lots to be Woo! excited about, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we heard a lot of things. I mean, we had our our worries going into that playing round, the qualifying round as they're calling it. And uh, I think we've kind of the cane showed up big time and how is it to be part of that broadcasting crew and, and work with guys like Shane Willis, Trip Tracy and Mike Maskelko? Yeah no I totally agree with you on that to be honest and I feel like Kane's fans will hate me for saying this but I did not expect a sweep and I'm always confident in our canes right <laughs> like just because you know we've struggled against the Rangers in the past and everything's so different now and um, you know, that, that exhibition game was okay. Um, but you know, you had to, you're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, right. With, with shaking off the rust. So for them to play, like come out and play the way that they did was awesome to see. And it gives me all the confidence in the world as we head into Boston, which I'm sure we'll get to later, but just that experience of working with Mike Tripp and Shane is awesome. Um, I mean, it was weird, obviously, you know, having to broadcast the game from PNC Arena for a number of reasons. A, we're obviously watching the game like everyone else is on a screen. Um, and then B, it's just like we're in an empty arena, like an empty PNC Arena, and we're getting fired up about Kane's hockey. And that was so tough to do without having fans in the building. Um, and we made the most of it, though, right? Like, it was uh, – sorry um, – we made the most of it. So, like, what was really funny was Mike and Tripp were up in the broadcast booth, up, like, where press row is, and then Shane and I were on the concourse. And we could hear Mike and Tripp, like, echoing across the arena as they're calling the game. And, like, me and Shane are, like, trying to yell back at them, like, yeah, like, let's go. And, like, I don't think they could hear us, though. So, like, me and Shane, like, sound like idiots, like, down on the concourse trying to yell back through the arena. It's like, we can hear them, you know, yelling when it goes to commercial break and um, stuff like that. But it was a, it was a really unique experience. Everyone was excited for the challenge I think at the end of the day having hockey back was obviously you know the silver lining of all of it right like we're getting people excited about hockey being back we're excited hockey's back and we're going to take it as we can get it at this point you know um and so you know Mike and Tripp are great obviously Tripp and I actually have a really great relationship after I filled in for Mike um I really you know kind of leaned on him a lot during that time and Shane the same the same way um he's not the guy that is very public on social media and stuff but as you know if I text him or call him or need anything he's always quick to respond and um he's the best like you know he's just he's so naturally good at what he does um and being able to lean on him from an analytical perspective is great and that's also the unique part about sitting there watching the game with him Versus when I was filling in for Mike, we would go our separate ways as the game action would begin, right? I would go down to the to the rink side and um, do the interviews and stuff. Well, now I'm sitting beside Shane the entire time. So I'm asking him all sorts of, of questions like, hey, you know, because I'm still, you know, every I'm always a student of the game, right? Like you continue to, to learn hockey. There's so many moving parts to it. Um, and it's such a beautiful sport. And so to have a guy that you know, played for the for the team and was in that locker room and just can see all the ins and outs of the game and being able to sit there and like ask him questions and and you know we can talk through it together is a cool experience in itself. So um, very different, but I am so thankful for the opportunity to be in the position that I'm in. And I, you know, Kane Toffee is is doing great right now. So hopefully we can keep it going. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be weird, sitting in the empty arena. <laughs> so weird. So oh, but I'm weird. sure Shane makes up for it. I, yeah, had Shane I, I, I know, the Abby. I know. <laughs> I know the feeling. I used to work in operations in the building, and I was there when absolutely nobody was. It yeah. felt weird. 
it echoes more than you like I mean I guess a big building you expect it to echo but like I don't know I guess I've never been in there when it echoes like that <laughs> it's really bizarre <laughs> yeah we've had Shane on on the pod before and we know how fun he is uh, from his initial corn dog incidents at the fair <laughs> to all the bench warmers yeah, the men yeah, yeah. all his on ice and off ice shenanigans. He's a lot of fun to have around. I and I'm pretty. We, you two together make a very dynamic duo, and we're proud of you for being able to step in the role so well. Thank you. He's such an easy guy to trust, and I don't feel stupid asking him the dumb questions. Right? Like I know he, he, you know, he knows it's coming, and we build a really great relationship, and so it makes it so much easier to work with him. Yeah, we talked about it when he was on our show that he's kind he for me anyway, I was very intimidated to talk to him at first. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the way he carries himself or the way yeah. he looks at you, but it's just like I feel like I'm about this big when I'm getting ready to talk to you. But once you talk to him, it's like why do yeah. I even feel that? <laughs> yeah for sure I think it's the way he carries himself for sure like from if you didn't really know him or like really yeah like you said like just kind of seeing him from the outside looking in um I think I was a little more comfortable with him too because I would work with him a little bit you know as the end game host when I we would do you talking stuff and so I would go into his office and knowing that he's a coach too, you have to think he's a little personable, right? Like he's <laughs> with all this stuff that he does for first goal and everything. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I totally, totally get that feeling. <laughs> Cause that's when I, I really started interacting with him with when, when, when my daughter was in first goal. So, that's but so I awesome. was still just intimidated to talk to him, <laughs> but not anymore. Now I'm just like, Hey, you should have done right yeah you just like (laughs) (laughs) right right he's gonna be like oh god it's that girl again no (laughs) shane's shane's a very easy person to work with but that's not the only thing that's contributed to your success you're an easy person to work with and from everything Mm -hmm. we've heard and and i would hope so (laughs) right (laughs) um I mean, you're putting up with our craziness, so we got right. going. Right, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so tell us about how you kind of moved into the roles that you've moved into. Yeah, so I went to NC State and I studied communication media. Um, I always knew, go back, right? I always knew that I wanted to be a sports reporter and sports broadcasting before I even started college. And so as soon as I started in college, I quickly realize that it's a very competitive industry and networking is the utmost important part of it. And so I started right away at NC State just trying to get involved in anything and everything I could do. And um, as I started to get my first, you know, mentors in the business, they were like, you know, don't be afraid to like, don't say no to things like do, even if you don't think it's going to benefit you, like say yes to it because it'll somehow circle back to benefit, benefiting you later. Right. And when you think like sports reporter, like, oh, well, it's, you're not on camera, then like, what else is going to benefit you? Like, no, editing, production, you know, working with the SIDs, which was a huge, like, that helped me realize the other side of it right now, as I am a reporter, you guys know, like having to go through SIDs and PR guys and the, all the work that they do to give us the media notes and the information that they, like, we, we rely on for these broadcasts is huge. And so, you know, interning on that side, allowed me to be a better communicator on this side of things now um and so I did a lot of everything while I was at NC State and to be completely honest the only time I really I didn't have a lot of friends that really went to Canes games you know the team wasn't as popular as it was and wasn't doing as well you know as as they have been recently and so as a student I was so focused on NC State and NC State athletics and then you know I kind of dipped my toes in the rest of college sports because, you know, we're in Tobacco Road. And so um, I did a, an internship my senior year of college with a news station with uh, Spectrum News. And that's where I started kind of uh, following the Canes a little bit. So I had, you know, I, I knew, and I think around that time, that's when Tom was coming in, Tom Dunham was coming in. So I was pretty familiar with the ownership chain, um, you know, kind of the trends and topics with the team. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really know hockey. Actually, I didn't, I didn't know hockey at all, to be honest. Like I didn't, I never really followed it. I was born and raised in Charlotte. 
and I maybe went to one or two checkers games, but it's just, it, I didn't grow up with it. And mm -hmm. so when I graduated and I saw, you know, I was still trying to explore opportunities and figure out how to continue to grow in this industry. I started looking at teams specifically because I had a little bit of some in-game hosting background from some stuff that I did in college. And um, I realized that a lot of really great reporters started as in-game hosts. And so I started kind of researching, okay, what, are, what does an in-game host do? What are, you know, at a professional level, like you can get involved digitally. And anyway, so I started applying for a lot of in-game hosting jobs everywhere. Um, I went to a Boston Celtics audition. I had one with the Tampa Bay Rays. Like I was willing to go wherever. Um, and crazy enough, the, the job posting for the Canes came like, you know, a few months after I graduated. And I was like, this is right in my backyard. Like, why would I, you know, this, this would be cool. But I was nervous because I didn't know hockey. And so I applied. They called me in for the audition. And it was, you know, Mike Foreman was, had just, I think, been hired for, for the position there. So he was one of the guys interviewing me. I did like an audition in an empty arena. Talk about empty arenas. It was just <laughs> me in an empty arena. And I was auditioning. I was like trying to get the crowd fired up and there was no crowd. I'm like, all right, guys, it's time for t-shirts. And it's like, it's like, just like Mike Foreman and Chris Greenley, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I was transparent with them about, hey, I'm familiar with the, the topics and trends of the team, but all I've been doing the last four years is NC State, a college basketball and college football. I was like, but I would love to learn the sport of hockey, take a chance on me. And, and I'll, I'll learn and I'll, I'll, I will grow with you guys. And they did. And, and you know, since then, I, I have, you know, I, I obviously went from just being promotions my first year, like t-shirt tosses and games, to then, you know, growing into getting my own show in game, which was great experience. And all that was just for me going to them and pestering them like, hey, I want to do more. I want to do more. Look, I, I've taught myself this all summer. Like, I understand the game now. Like, here's, you know, I'm, I understand the league. And so just from me doing that and being eager to take on more opportunity, I've been so thankful for the organization, you know, taking that chance on me and allowing me to, to grow with them. And they're, they've been so supportive with that. And so obviously I, I started to make connections with the Fox Sports Carolina crew and, um, you know, Mike became a great mentor for me and I got to know Trip and, um, you know, obviously working with Shane and, and the producers with Fox Sports Carolina, um, you know, they, they, gave me some tips and pointers on things that I needed to work on at, while I was an in-game host. And here's how you can get into TV. And, um, you know, crazy enough, the, obviously the situation happened with Mike, which was scary. Um, and, you know, I'm so thankful that obviously, like that was probably one of the toughest things that I had ever gone through. Right. Because, um, and I've talked to Mike about this a lot, like you work so hard, right. To get to a certain point and then, you know, in your career and then, you get it at the expense of potentially somebody's life. Like that phone call from Mike Sunheim that day when I found out Mike was in the hospital was, hey, like Mike is in the hospital. We don't know if he's going to be okay, but the show must go on and we need you to step into his role. And like that was, how do you process that, right? You right. know, like somebody yeah. who yeah. is trying to, to make those next steps, but like Mike's a mentor for me. We didn't know if he was going to be okay. And then, you know, obviously – he was fine, and, and we knew that, and luckily we knew that before I went to my first broadcast, and after that, he was so supportive of, like, you need to take this opportunity and run with it, because, you know, I, I'm going to be supportive of you, like, don't say that you're filling my shoes, like, this is your role for the next, you know, couple weeks or so, and I will be back, and, you know, and that's, that's the great news of it all, and so that opportunity was obviously a great opportunity for me to then, you know, showcase those skills on that platform um, and then fast forward to now you know here we go again everyone's moving back up the totem pole right and so it's kind of crazy how everything worked out but um, I am surrounded by so many supportive people within this organization that have helped me grow and they trust me and they're just so supportive and I you know couldn't think of a better way to have just kick-started my career other than being here in Raleigh with the Hurricanes so that's kind of I know it's like a lot but um it's just crazy how everything comes full circle right <laughs> so, yeah we, I mean, we kind of went full we kind of went full spectrum with your entire work history except for one <laughs> except for one okay I'm what am I missing 
Did you do an internship with the Coastal Plains League? I did. <laughs> I'm calling hey, you out I, on that one because I work we, for the I work for the Salamanders, so I'm calling you on that one. If we sat here and went through all the internships <laughs> that I've done, we would be here for like three hours. Like I said, I was not saying no to anything. I'm like, give it to, like you know, I I did I did so many different things, and uh, it was so cool. Coastal Plain League was a great experience. Um, that was fun because I did a lot of baseball in college. Um, I actually thought that I baseball would be the sport that I was going to be working in when I graduated, just because I had done a lot of it um, with NC State baseball, Coastal Plain League. I did the Canapolis. Do you guys know the Canapolis Intimidators? I don't even think they're the Canapolis Intimidators anymore. No, they're they're the Cannonballers because the cannonballers. of uh, <laughs> yeah because of copyright <laughs> issues with D uh, Dale's name. Yeah. That was my first in-game hosting experience, which was uh, minor league baseball. Is man, that's a, that's an exciting time there. That is a journey for sure. So, um, tell, but yeah, tell me about the um, the audition. How nerve wracking is that? What do they usually want from you? Yeah, so I've done actually quite a few auditions, um, and they've all been different. You would think, even though they're all in-game hosting auditions, they were all different. So the one in Boston I did was, it was a closed, closed audition. So like they had invited me, but there was like 20 other people they invited to do it as well. And so we actually spent the entire day in TD Garden and we all auditioned in front of each other. And so we did like group auditions and they paired us up and we did like a lot of, um, you know, things, but every, there was, you know, the rest of the people auditioning with you sat there and watched you, which it was kind of a, it kind of comforted you a little bit versus like with the Canes, um, it was me in an empty arena. So yeah, essentially yeah. I literally just, I just <laughs> went in there and I did exactly, they gave me a script like the night before. Um, and they said, Hey, here's, you know, here's the promotions you need to know. And then here are a couple things that we'll want you to add with and like think on the spot with. Um, so like be prepared for the curveballs that they throw at you. Um, and so I literally went in the arena and I was standing down in 1:30 on the little platform where I always have done my stuff. And it was the camera and me. And then it was like Mike Foreman, Chris Greenlee, and oh my gosh, I can't even remember who the two other people were. Oh, John Chase was one. And then there was one oh. other person, I think, just like sitting like by themselves in the stands, like just staring at me. <laughs> like, oh, I was going to ask you, were they behind you or in front of you? Just peeing? they were. They were out of sight. They were beside okay. me. So they were like up in 129. So like 130. So they were like diagonal behind me. Um, but they would talk to me. So I would like do it. And then they would like talk to me. And then I would like do the next promo. And then they would like talk to me. And um, yeah, it was, it, it's auditions are, I don't think we've oh, talked works. about this before with like other, um, with other like women in the industry and, and personalities in the industry. You even have to do auditions for TV, like broadcast, like NHL Network makes you do a audition. And um, so I know that my days with auditioning, I'm sure are not done. And I don't think I've heard it never gets easier because you can't ever prepare for them, right? Like you just right. have to be yourself. And that's the best you can do. Because at the end of the day, um, and I can't remember who, who I was doing my podcast with that said this, but I love Oh, it's Lauren Gardner. Um, mm -hmm. Love her. Uh, she said, if if you're somebody that you're not and they hire that person, that means you're going to be pretending to be somebody you're not the entire time you're in this role. Why would you not be the best version of yourself and be yourself? And if they don't like you for that, then there's no point in, you know, being a part of that organization anyway. So um, that I thought was really powerful from her. And so I, that's the mindset that I've always kept just in my everyday job, right? Like just be the best version of yourself, and people are going to love you and people are going to hate you. And, you know, that's the industry. So, <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, you're doing an amazing job. You really Thank are. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Just but, imagine, you. just imagine Kevin Weeks and Abby Labar on NHL <laughs> Network. Oh, that was God. Right. Weeksy, man. He, he did a, did you see the birthday, the Rod Brennamore birthday video? Yeah. <laughs> he did like a little shout out from the NHL studio. I've never met him before. I don't know if you guys have, but I've met Kevin Weeks at the All Star Game in Tampa two years ago. Yeah. Uh, he's a brill He's a wonderful person to talk to. He's he's very um. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
not thorough, but he's he cares about the person. He makes you feel like he he cares about the conversation. Yeah. Um, and he treats everyone he talks to with respect. I never see him talk down mm-hmm. to a fan who's talking to him. Uh, yeah. Surprisingly, another person that we met there, PK Subin, he's kind of the same way. Which I am, obs- I think I've said this so many times recently, and I guess because we've all been bored and like um, on social media, I'm obsessed with PK and Lindsey Vaughn. Like, I'm like, I like religiously follow both of their Instagram accounts, and I'm like, what are they up to today? <laughs> They, uh, yeah. uh, they have personality. They have, yeah, but it's I mean, but like, <laughs> ha, like the NHL needs that, right? Like yeah. those, like PK gets so much hate, and it's just like it's because he has a personality. Like that's what the NHL needs. He doesn't fit into the Don Cherry mold of no. hockey. He should players. be a hurricane. There's a reason Don Cherry's out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Hey, but yes. at least Amanda, she had a pretty cool experience with PK. Did yeah, I've met, him, I've met him twice. Well, the first time okay. um, I met his dad, actually. Uh, okay. I was up at the concessions, and he was in front of me. And, you know, I followed him on PK on Instagram. So yeah. I'm pulling up my Instagram going, is that his dad? <laughs> so I, um, he turns around. And I was like, uh, excuse me, are you Mr. Subban? And he's like, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, all hurricane stuff. You know? I love and he's it. Like, oh. right. <laughs> he's like, um, yeah, you know, who is this crazy son? And I was like, oh, I'm a big fan of your son. And he's like, that's so great. And he, oh he, my you know, he's with my kids and he talks about my kids being in hockey and stuff. And, well, that's he was, awesome. and then I just that's happened awesome. to get, um, in, in the, the loading docks when they were all leaving. So um, PK and his dad were coming out and his dad was like, hey, that's your fan over there. You should go <laughs> so, so he came over and he, you know, he took pictures with me and my kids. So it was, oh, that, that was so really cool. cool. Oh. But then um, I took my girls to the NWHL All-Star Weekend at in Nashville, and they did a um, like a meet and greet with him. So that was pretty that's cool. So he cool. Him, at least he said he did. But that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah, he's always been very nice. I I was really into him at first, but he kind of got on my nerves with Lindsey Vaughn. Yeah, was just, right. <laughs> yeah. Can you people have people get so annoyed? <laughs> right. Can you have a conversation without missing Lindsey just for like five minutes? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could if I were I him, but, it. you know, that's right? neither here nor there. He's so <laughs> that, that, awesome. That's yeah. impossible. How could you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but, okay, so let's, let's transition back. <laughs> <laughs> that Move back. it that way. <laughs> All right. Bring it back, bring it back. You were talking about, you know, speaking with other women in the industry and stuff. What kind of challenges do you, have you face or do you think women face and, and what do you think we could do to improve those things? Um, I think the biggest challenge is being put into probably like this narrow, like here's what women's role should be and that's how it should be, right? Like whether it's a sideline reporter or a host for a show, it's hard because, you know, women obviously have um, you know, obviously are emotional. They have those emotional connections with, you know, people like no offense to men, but like women are just, you know, they have yeah. that obviously like they, they bring something different to a broadcast because they are women. And so I think a lot of times you run into this, like, I'm trying to think of like the right word, but this, um, Oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Barrier? No. Um, oh my God, I can't think of it. Uh, Welcome to Revolution Rampage. Words are hard. Stigma. Oh my God. Stigma, stigma, stigma. Stigma. They run into a have, having to have some sort of stigma or the stigma of this is a woman. She just needs to, you know, do her job, like stay in your lane type of thing as a woman. Um, and I think that's the toughest thing because, like, we want to have a voice and we want to add value to a broadcast 
not just because we are a woman on the broadcast, right? Like we are intelligent. We have our own, you know, personalities. Like we bring value to the broadcast in all these unique ways. And so you shouldn't just, you know, have to stay in a certain like lane or be in a certain, like be in this like certain stigma of like what women should be in this business. And so I think that's probably the toughest thing. And the thing that I've learned as I've talked to some of these other women about like being unapologetically yourself and being confident and comfortable in that. Um, And I think that's some of the best women we see as reporters and hosts that are able to do that on not just on broadcast, right? So like on social media as well, like just voicing their opinions and being confident about that and adding value to the industry. And so I think that's like the biggest challenge. Um, And the biggest challenge too, just for like understanding that it's okay to be that way, right? Like as women and, and as we grow, like being confident in our own selves that we are adding value, that we are gonna bring, you know, something different and that we do have that knowledge because like I said, I I struggle and I question a lot like my intelligence when it comes to the game of hockey because I'm still new to the sport, but I'm open about that and I'm vulnerable with it. Like I'm I'm learning and I'm growing and bear with me guys because like I know my stuff when I, you know, because I've done my research, right? And, and if I mess up, then it's fine. Like, I'm only human. We're all only human. And so right. I think that's, that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. And that's good advice for women in, in general, because as women, we, we question ourselves more and mm-hmm. we doubt ourselves more. We Absolutely. Like we, have to have, we have to live up to a certain standard or mm-hmm. look a certain way or, you know, do things a yeah. certain way because we're women and we're being judged. But really, we're judging ourselves and yeah it's almost like women have to compete with each other at least they feel that way mm-hmm. when really they yeah. should just be boosting each other up and yeah. be like yes you got it you're doing great. yep and all that goes away when you are confident and comfortable in yourself yeah. and in your intelligence and what you provide because that's what I've learned as I've built these relationships with these other women the the women that I have the, the closest strongest relationship with are so confident in themselves and like would never ever and they are so so, and so supportive because in an industry like this it is tough right like everyone's competing even with men men and women right. too like everyone's all competing for the same job right but yeah. we're also like in in a family tight-knit community industry where we have to be able to you know support one another as well and so there's that balance right and so the best reporters and hosts understand that, you know, your mentor or the person you're mentoring could take your job one day. And that's fine. You know, that's how it works. It's a small industry. And if you are still supportive of that person and, you know, you continue to boost them up and then, you know, obviously understand that, okay, they took your job, but you're just going to get another one, right? Like just continue to support each other through all of that. Um, And so that's the best women in this industry are just so, so, confident and comfortable in themselves and and so unapologetically themselves and I, I love that so much I so too. absolutely yeah, yeah it's awesome yeah cool. as a as a fellow broadcaster especially at my alma mater Westminster College Broadcasting gotta give them a shout out I had so <laughs> many uh female co-workers that were producers that were my color commentators when I was their color commentator when they were reporters out in the field at my college especially they were given that chance to show it and they moved on to big careers in Pittsburgh uh one ended up with the National Arena League they had that chance to move on and I feel like that's especially more prominent now because you see more increasing numbers of men not only in hockey but in sports in general and especially with the Canes their, their number of female employees have consistently increased over the last couple of years yeah for sure which you is awesome to see right um and it just I think it just continues to prove that there's so much more that women you know bring to the table from that you know how much we're valued and so I think that it's really cool to see that everywhere you know across all sports um the NHL especially it's great to see because it's not just the Canes too we've seen some awesome hires uh, like Seattle, you know, hired a, hired a woman and a 
um, big role there. And it's, it's great to see that. And in the so analytics inspired. department. Yes, that's what it is. And I, I can't forget her name, but um, I remember that was big news for several, like all of us women were, were super excited to see that. So yeah, and Blake yeah. Bolden hired with the Kings uh, as a scout and have mm -hmm. a female scout. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have some bad news. What? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Who, who got it? Uh, the first overall draft pick of the 2020. Oh, no, I forgot that was on. <laughs> who, is who is No, Abby, what, who is it? Who is it, Omar? Uh, it's the... Um, Alexi Lafanier will be going to New York City and the New York Rangers. Oh, oh no. no. Are you kidding me? Why does the Metro keep getting harder? Oh. Because <laughs> every championship has to come through this oh division. My God. All right. <laughs> why? Oh, Just my God. Why? <laughs> That's so funny. Right when you think the Rangers will get knocked down a peg, that Yeah, happens. seriously. Now that I've ruined everyone's mood. <laughs> <laughs> of course the New Yorker would do this. Hey. hey, why, hey, did hey, hey, hey. The, why did I think why did I think it wasn't on until like eight o'clock tonight? I feel like that's what like it should have been on, but they decided yeah, to like so ramp early. it up to six. Yeah. Batman's got his uh, beauty sleep. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Because they wouldn't you know, you know, you know Panarin is dancing right now. <laughs> you, think Hank, do you, you think Hank now thinks he's finally going to get a shot at a cup? <laughs> I think Hank's done in New York. <laughs> Poor guy. I feel, I feel a little, so I, I bad for him. For him. Poor I do. Somebody I honestly think he's getting bought out. Like, I don't think he's even going to get traded. I think he's getting bought out and he'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Get the uh, Patrick Marlowe treatment. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. All hail that King Marlowe, legend of the that Hurricanes. He gets traded to Philadelphia and then sinks their team as well. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Again, bringing it back. This is my job <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, this, I keep the guys. I, I'm like, okay, guys, come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm like, women I'm adding mom. value. We know how to organize people. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda just puts up with the craziness of me and Omar and she balances out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to have that balance. You got to have the time there. <laughs> in check. But, you know, speaking of that, what advice would you give young ladies who are trying to get into this industry or older ladies that are trying to get into this industry? <laughs> or, just anyone on, or just anyone on this pod that all want to work on hockey. <laughs> um, I think just like don't give up on yourself and I think that's the the thing that I have learned as I've you know built friendships in this industry is there's you know I've I've met people that they're just like it's not like it's not for me I'm not getting to where I want to be and not that they give up on themselves you know they're okay with it like stepping away from the industry but I think the people that are successful understand like the grit and grind of it and they know they're okay with the failures and the no's. And I think that's tough going back to women and just our emotions and trying to be confident and comfortable in our own skin. Like people are going to tell you they don't like you. People are going to tell you that you're doing something wrong. You are going to mess up. And if you give up on yourself in those moments or you, you know, it's like the, like the goaltender mindset, right? Like don't dwell on the past, you know, just continue to move forward. Um, I think that's, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing because this industry is mentally exhausting. It is physically and mentally exhausting for so many reasons, but the rewards are so great. Um, and, you know, if you just continue to, to plug along and, you know, you do it until like you're literally say you're, you've exhausted all your options, which I don't even think is possible to be honest, because if you're that passionate and motivated, like you're going to continue to create opportunities for yourself when the opportunities aren't coming per se. So that's the best piece of advice I would give. Or you end up like Bob McKenzie working 40 years and retiring. Congrats. Oh my gosh, right? Wish we all had a career like that. Hopefully one day. <laughs> oh, oh, we know you will. <laughs> okay, hopefully, thanks. Hopefully one day. <laughs> It'll be you, Sarah, and Bridget just tearing it up and we're all going to be yeah. happy. We're going to... We're going to be on our walkers, like, still, still <laughs> plugging along, right? 
<laughs> still roommates somehow. <laughs> <laughs> still, yeah, right? Still roommates in a nursing they, home. <laughs> they just got a they just got a mansion up in North Raleigh somewhere. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Fantastic. So let's let's talk about the series here. Let's just let's talk about then, Boston, Carolina again, again. Right. Please. Four what are the time. odds? What are the it, what are the odds that it would have been Washington or Boston? Like that's just our luck, isn't it? <laughs> one in four. One in four. Those those were the yeah. odds. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, like seriously. <laughs> Boston is now officially the team that we played the most in the playoffs. No, the Devils. The Devils are tied at four. So we played the Devils and the Bruins four times. Okay. Well, this is the fourth time. Uh, they're tied for the most series against the Carolina Hurricanes in the playoffs. So that's an interesting uh, statistic. Drop that off next time. That's, that's my gift to you. <laughs> but you saw the uh, – some people were tweeting about, like, it was like Canes lost to Boston and then Canes won and then we lost last year. So, like, what's hey, the cycle repeats. This year, right? <laughs> the cycle repeats. So, you're right. We'll you're see. absolutely right. Oh <laughs> nine, and then I can't remember yeah. the year. Twenty uh, teens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're the so. first people. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't well, handle we, words, we but remember. math. We got to remember, though. We got to remember this. In the first three round robin games, the perfect line that Boston has zero goals. Zero. Yeah. Right, that... So this perfect line of Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand. Mm-hmm. And David Pasternak, which is still a dangerous line. They should, even though they've been held to no points, yeah. they shouldn't be underestimated. I'll still put Slavin, Hamilton, Vatten out there <laughs> up against them. I think those between them, maybe even Brady Shea. I mean, we've got some of the most elite defenders in the world. We got to play them well, and I think we will be in good shape to watch Shea go after Charo. <laughs> it's going to be hard. And look at the teams that did beat Bo- uh, Boston. They did it w- with a goal or two, not not blowing them out of the water. So what is your prediction, Abby, for this seven-game series? Canes in five. Canes in five. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Revolution Epic it. had it here yeah, first. But, but <laughs> I will say, and I was, I was actually talking about this with Sarah last night. Um, Sarah and her, her boyfriend, we were discussing it. If the Canes are going to win this series, I think they have to do it in one of those, like, four or five. Like, you, if you start taking it farther, I think that's where it gets a little scary with, okay, Boston is such an elite team. If the Canes can get out to that start that they did with New York and ride on that for as much as they can, right, like, and just kind of get win, 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 and, and get that those early wins, I think that's how they're going to – end up doing it and that's just like a hot that's like a super hot take right um I think that line like you talked about like yeah they were held to what so it was zero points for the all three games I'm still like going through all my media notes before tomorrow um, I'm pretty sure it was one but I knew they weren't playing goals. yeah I knew they weren't playing well um it was Patrice that had the like assist or something it was like an assist or something and it was on um, a power play yeah so here's the difference, right? Like, they didn't really have anything to play for. But if I'm Boston or any of these teams in the round robin game, wouldn't you think, and this is another, like, obviously, like, me just kind of guessing or from a fan reporter perspective, like, wouldn't you think they would want to play their hardest? Because if those are the best teams in the conference, they're going to have to face them in, you know, later on in the conference finals. So why would they be, like, not playing their best or like just shaking the rust off and treating these as exhibition preseason games. Like you would think they would want to play hard because then what they're going to just all of a sudden try to jump into the, the playoff, you know, mindset for this first round. So I get that they didn't have much to play for, but I also don't understand why they weren't playing as hard as they should have or to their best too. So I know that's what kind of, Bruce Cassidy was saying this morning, like, it's going to be a different, we're going to play at a higher level once this first round starts. Okay, fine, I get that. But, like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I'll say that it could be a, a matter of consequences. You know, if you think if yeah. you, you go on the ice and you're like, well, if I don't do my best today, 
I get to live another day. It's okay. Yeah. Versus it's not the, uh, like, you know, go home or it's not the do or die situation. Right. And they don't get, they don't get that fight or flight reflex or, mm-hmm. uh, in, in them, um, it's just mentally, yes, they, they say, I'm going to go out there and put a hundred percent. They tell themselves that they go out there and, um, they make a mistake, but in, in, in the mentality in the head is not, Oh crap, this could cost me the game or the season. The mentality is it's okay. I can come mm-hmm. back from this because we have that safety net. I don't yeah. know if that will cause them to play better or worse. See, like Bruce Cassidy saying, oh, they'll come out and play better. But how do I know now that the Bruins team that's put under pre- real pressure is going to actually play better than the Bruins team that was playing comfortably? Um, mm-hmm. that's, that's a very good question. And as for – Going deep in the series, I have one thing, and I brought it up in the last episode when I said when the Canes play back-to-back, I don't know who wins the first game, but the Canes win the second game. And I said, hey, if the Hurricanes win game two against the Rangers, the Rangers might as well pack their bags next morning because they're going home that night. He is right. He, we have yeah. people call Omar out on that, so we, he is right. You, you survived <laughs> this time. You survived so, this time. Games five and six are back to back, so the nineteenth yeah. and the twentieth are back to back games, and I don't know who wins games game five, but if they need game six, Carolina's winning game six, and that okay, might be that might yeah. be all it takes. Yeah. Plus, yeah, so- we when we get like home ice advantage after that, since we did beat the four team, so if we played anybody shorter than that, we get home ice technically. Well, yeah. I mean, so right now we are the fifth seed because so, they're reseeding every round. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we beat the uh, bo- if the, if we beat the Bruins, <laughs> then we'll at least move into the fourth seed, and very possibly if two other uh, play-in teams beat the round robin teams, yes, we would have home ice advantage in the second <laughs> round. But I am not. It's not something that really matters outside of. <laughs> uniforms and last change so yeah and last abby, change is you, brutal <laughs> abby do you think lightning columbus round two is going to happen the same way i don't know i think columbus or i think uh the lightning are are hung i think they're and i think that gives us an advantage too right like rod said it today when you play a team and i think this will be similar to the columbus tampa series when you have played a team that has no weaknesses. I loved this quote from him today. When you play a team that has no weaknesses, you have a better idea of how to beat them the next time around, right? And so, like, the Canes are coming into this knowing what happened last year, and they are ready for the revenge. And I think Tampa's the same way, too, especially because Tampa was sitting on a higher pedestal than we were at the time. So, I mean, I think Columbus is a great team, but I I think Tampa's going to – I think Tampa will take that series. So right I just, now, I just had a thought. Didn't Boston technically get the President's Trophy? Yeah, yes, they did. Still, still and so, they're saying that too. Yeah, they're saying so that. So if we, what if we pull off the sweep? Hmm. I would, mean, it, real, would it be as effective though? I, it's the same thing Columbus did to Tampa last year. So yeah, I, that's what I'm saying though. Like, would ours be more impactful than that one? I think after this point, when everyone's played a couple of playoff games, technically, because even even the round robin statistics count as playoff statistics, um, you know, then we can discuss whether or not everyone had some momentum, got a good look at the other teams. I mean, right now, Money Puck, which I like their analytics, has Boston as the underdog with Carolina with a 51.3% chance of winning that that series right you look at other series around the league uh tampa has a 58.4 percent chance of beating columbus the islanders um are the underdogs against the capitals with capitals having a 57.9 percent chance of beating the islanders (laughs) the battle of barry trots right the battle of barry trots is going to go to washington according to money puck um with the 57.9 percent so the the Carolina Bruins matchup is very close. It's closer than anything. And of course, uh, the Flyers have a outstanding sixty point eight percent chance of um, taking Montreal and sending them home with nothing in hand. I cannot believe Montreal. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's 
sometimes Carey Price has it. You know, you had to. Oh. Like, uh, Abby, they should just call no them. The, they should just call them the Carey Price Canadians at this point, because yeah, <laughs> I mean they are. But uh, Abby, you have no idea how much stuff I've been slinging at Penguins fans. My college was a was about an hour above Pittsburgh when oh, they won man. back-to-back cups, and I still wore my cane stuff every time. Love and it. The four Thank years. You. The four <laughs> years I was there, the Canes beat the Pens twice. <laughs> oh man, you stayed true. That's the good part, though. <laughs> I stayed true. <laughs> I see Drew, the, and now I'm throwing it back out. Too, weren't they? Yeah. So one thing to take in mind, right? This will be the second year in a row where in the first round, the Carolina Hurricanes is facing a team that played in the Stanley Cup Finals the year before. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. So um, our odds it's are also, good. It's, <laughs> We're going it's also the <laughs> second time in Hurricanes history that we made back-to-back playoffs. It's only the second time yeah. in Hurricanes history Hurricane slash Whaler sister too, by the way. Yeah. Well, if you don't count the WHL or yeah. w- WHA. Yeah. So NHL history. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. And I and this is why I love Rod so much, right? Everyone does. Um, first of all, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to win a, a cup or more, you know, with him. Um, so here, you know, he's so great because – he, the way he talks to us, like, you know, we always present these, like, numbers and um, fun facts, and we love that stuff, right? Like, we love to read those things because it helps us in our minds, like, oh, we have the better odds of winning because, like, this, this, and this, and, um, but he's always so straight to the point, and he's like, you know, we don't, those aren't the things we focus on. We focus on our game and, you know, our, our mindset. And we know that we can get beat by any team, but we can also beat any team. And so the mindset that he has, it's, it bleeds into you know a lot of us and it's just that team is going to be so successful no matter who the opponent is right like if they go in and do all the right things under the leadership that they have you know we can win a cup this year it's 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 and that's like rod's mindset too and i think that's how it trickles down into the players being so young you know these young guys have so much confidence in themselves and their teammates because of the leadership they have in that room and Rod and Justin and Jordan. And, you know, just the way Rod coaches is unlike anybody else. Um, He's a player's coach. And so we can sit here all day and like, look at these fun stats and, you know, whatever. But like, I, I'm going to sit here and believe in like what Rod's going to do as a leader for this team. And in my mind, the Canes are going to win. Right. And, And that's how we should all, you know, we should all ask in this, in this scenario, because he's just such a great leader. Um, and there's so much talent on the team. I think Justin Williams said it too, like, it's that will before skill as well. So it's not just that we have these talented guys, but we have these young kids who are so hungry to get better. And they are on the ice, like, outside of, you know, practice and Andre's out there, like practicing the lacrosse goal and like, those little things, that allow these guys to take their skill set to the next level because they have the drive and the motivation to get better. So I think all that combined, you know, we absolutely can beat this Bruins team. Um, and I think the the confidence they have after last year is is going to make it even better um, going in. And then obviously the the like revenge side of it, right? Like that's going to light a fire under them too. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> and then when yeah, we yeah. raise the cup, we will go all get in our cars again and do another parade. Yeah. Right. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I know. Seriously. I'm like, Oh, I hope, I hope things are better by then. Right. <laughs> yeah. But both me and Amanda were there for the send off. And I heard it was awesome. <laughs> it, re- it was, it was an interesting like a thousand experience. something cars. So little, cool. A thousand cars. And I think the, the, the player, I see the players in the bus, like, filming, like, oh, God. I mean, they thought it was so cool. They did. You guys saw it. Like, they thought Trip it was Trip Tracy awesome. with the time lapse. Yeah, right? Yeah, they thought it was the coolest thing ever, so. Well, we're, cool. one, we're only one of two teams that I, that during my research that actually did it. It was us in Vegas. I know. I'm surprised more people didn't, like. And, and I guess I get it. Like maybe where some of the arenas are, like we have a we have a good setup, right? Where you can get a bunch of cars in there. Why are tailgating the best? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't feasible for some people. But that was really cool. Um, and I love that. Go ahead, Zach. 
<laughs> the one good thing that we can bring over from college football. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had more oh, chanting, God. but... <laughs> I know. Hey, uh, welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, I mean, that was that was really cool. And I think it really, like, they truly value the community. And I think going back to Rod, like, Rod help like that trickles down from Rod like just watching his video um yesterday for his birthday um he said like you know this is like this is what it means to be a Carolina hurricane like this community is so special and it's so funny to see all like the conversations on Twitter about like where would Rod go next or like what is, what are the hurricanes going to pay him like Rod's not going anywhere like he lo he lives and breathes Carolina Hurricanes hockey like I don't think he would coach and he I, I think he's even said that he wouldn't coach anywhere else right like and so to have a coach that values the community so much and just that bleeds into the players and so that send-off you know ha had to have been so powerful for them um to see that and, and they want to bring a cup back home so really cool Abby I think uh, we've run so long here, and this is what, oh my the God, conversation sorry. is amazing. Hey, no, when, no, I talk when, a lot. <laughs> no, that's when your you, job. When you're having fun, when you're having fun, you're having yeah, fun going. that is your job. So we're not gonna we're not gonna step on it. But I have I have I do have one last question. Okay. Um, unless anyone else has a question, this is going to be the last question, uh, and it's going to be a tough question. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> You ready for this? Yeah. I don't All right. Know. I don't All right. Know. <laughs> Who's your favorite player? Oh my god. Oh no. I can't oh. answer it. Oh my god. I, I am a unbiased reporter. Could you give us a top three? Yeah, you don't you know you don't have to it doesn't have to be favorite player based on, on ice performance. It could be favorite yeah. player to talk to. Well, you can you I, can narrow it down however you want. I've said this openly. Like I, I, there's a lot of guys in that locker room that are great people. Um, and obviously on the ice, great players. I love Andre because he is so like, he's obviously, he's so talented on the ice, but his innocence is so pure. And to have a player that is that good and just be the nicest, most like the sweetest human being off the ice is so refreshing especially in this league, right? Like just knowing that he's going to continue to just get better on the ice. And we all hope that his personality continues to grow with that too. Like, you know, like he's going to be one of the best, if not, you know, he could be the best player in this league in, you know, a few years. And a lot of times, you know, not to knock on any of these other amazing people, but we, you know, the NHL, people keep to themselves. And like, Andre is just like, as soon as you walk into the locker room, it's like, hi, everyone. Like, just wait. Like, he's just so sweet. And you just, just hope that <laughs> he keeps that as he continues to get better. Um, and so I love that about him. I mean, obviously, Sebastian Ajo is an amazing player to watch. He's going to be great to, to continue to watch grow. And then, you know, Dougie Hamilton and George Martinook are like the men of the people, you know, the fan favorites. And their personalities are are, you know, Jordan's his own, his own person, but Dougie's always it's very nice. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. So the Marty party. I mean, come on. The, team, the team is, so, the team dynamic is so cool. Like, just, you have people from all different walks of life, and to see them mesh is, like, the coolest thing ever. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing about Andre, and one thing that does excite me is that he, he gets to be molded by Rod. Yeah. 100% molded by mm -hmm. Rod and Rod. He, like, a lot of these other players have had other coaching um, to help them mold, like, the star yeah. players. I'm talking about Table Turbine has been on a couple of teams. Mm -hmm. Andre, uh, Sebastian Ajo has seen uh, previous coaching under Bill Peters, but Andre he only knows Rod. Absolutely, and, and, yeah. In the two times I've met Andre, he's been adorable. He's like a puppy. I remember <laughs> sitting next to him, really is. you know, night, and I'm like, here, have a sticker for the podcast. Enjoy. After it. the, after the what, the four months that you were trying to get his signature on your jersey? Yeah. Yeah, and he goes, and, he, and all he says is, what is podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't like, explain it to him. He cares. He really does. And that's just so cool for a guy that gets 
so much like exposure exposure and publicity and sometimes you wonder like does this kid even realize how good he is like seriously <laughs> the way he, he acts and carries himself yeah. it's like I don't think he understands like what he's gonna be one day like I really I know that's what I mean by innocent like he's <laughs> and it's so great great to see that um and want to be able to follow that so uh, I love that and I think that's a great point about Rob though I don't think enough of us you know think that way at least I you know I didn't really like I think that's why we're seeing um some great sparks from Marty Nature, right like really you know Marty's learning a lot from Rod granted he was you know with the checkers for a little bit but um you know I think the longer he's been under Rod the more we've kind of seen some why he's going to be so good too so it's going to be really cool to see how all these players develop under Rod Brennamore. Yeah absolutely. I'm um, Oh, that's one of the things that I, I absolutely love about this team is all of the guys are are genuine. They're you know you, they don't have egos. There's and if 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 a player comes on that does have an ego, they don't last long. For sure. You know, oh, exactly. And we've seen that. Put up with that. Yeah, and we've seen. They're all very kind. They they'll they'll stop and talk to you. They'll you know they're very polite. They all have manners, and nobody has a big head. And that's yeah. one of the things that I love about it. And you have to have that with Kane Taki, right? Like, I love tell people always ask, like, what makes, like, you know, why is Kane's marketing so good? Like, what makes them so popular? And it's like, because we don't take ourselves too seriously. Like, we really don't. And that's in the players now that we've kind of gotten this really great group of players that are pretty much the same way. Like, they don't take themselves too seriously either. And so that's what, you know, that's the personality and, you know, how you have to carry yourself if you're going to be Carolina Hurricanes. So I, yeah, you're so right about that. And I that love the society. society. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Abby, it's been wonderful having you on. Um, thank you to everyone in the organization that's made this possible over at Fox Sports mm -hmm. Carolina. Uh, we look forward to really watching you, Shane, Mike, Tripp, Say hi to them for all of us. And hey, I think the Hurricanes are going to take the Bruins in five. And I agree with you. We're on the same wavelength here. Let's do this. Let's knock this out and move on to the second round. And then. So yeah, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. It was great. Yeah, keep up the great work you're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>